Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today a moving scarecrow and hidden image using lawn fronds, waving pull tab die, modifying it a little bit, and having, you know, a, a go at something a little bit different. If you missed my first one that I modified that waving pull tab die, I ended up doing a dancing ghost card for the Fab Five Hop and Giveaway at the beginning of this month. And so if you missed that one, go back and watch it. it shows how to make two images kind of dance on the front of your card using that waving pull tab die. It was fun. So to start this one I'm working with some emboss resist technique to kind of get me my, I don't want to say one layer background, but kind of a one layer background to start with and then I'll build up from there. Because I know I want that waving pull tab to be on that background panel I want it to be fairly one layer so I'm not going to run into any images that are sticking up and or out. You'll have to excuse the voice this is what we have I ended up getting sick after the football game on Friday night last week and I have been down for the count most of the week I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better my voice not so much so for those corn stalks there, I stamp them with Distress Oxide in tea dyed ink. If you stamp and cover it with that clear embossing powder fast enough, you can get an embossed look with them without having to use that Versafine or Versamark ink. It works. It's, you know, it's not idea, but it if you're fast enough you can get it to go. So the first layer I did I definitely did only a couple and heat set right away and then for the last one I just stamped really fast and covered it quick and then my heat gun was already warmed up so it set really quick and it worked well. So it's not it's not for everyone to do it that way but if you can manage to do it fast enough and work fast enough it works well. For my clouds there, I'm using Stormy Skies, and then I ended up coming in with Lavender Mist, Lavender Mist, Lavender View. I think it's Lavender Mist. Anyways, to kind of add some purple to those clouds, I'd already had my image colored for this one, so I kind of wanted to make it blend in or kind of go with the image coloring that I had already done. I'm coming in with some Brutus Monroe Aqua Pigments in Violet Frost to add some sparkle and shine to that background and a little bit of distress, you know. Then I'm going to die cut my panel out using the largest rectangle from the large rectangle, stitched rectangle stack from Lompon. It is an A2 size front, so it is that four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I'm bringing in the waving pull tab die pieces here. So I'm going to line up my little notch here and then I am actually going to use for the last one that I did I kind of moved it down and so it wasn't exactly using the pull tab as intended because I ended up making a separate hole for it. This time I decided to you know let my shall I say not fully functioning brain <clears throat> a break and I used the actual little I don't know is it a, the guide there we go the guide for this one so I didn't have to think about it too hard <sighs> my my head is finally clearing a little bit even if my voice doesn't sound the greatest and then, because I know I'm going to need just a teeny tiny bit of that pull tab is going to show, I grabbed a piece of scrap paper here and I'm just going to ink, using whatever ink is left on my blending brushes here to kind of make it go with that background piece so it blends in well. And then I will also cut out the little waving pull tab arms. You can use, I did the Dense Week Den one, you are more than welcome to use any of the ones that you have you can use the bat wings or the owl wings you just can you can cut them down to any shape really once you have it where you need it and I forgot to cut out a 
band, so I just used a piece of scrap paper, and I'm just going to modify one and make it. It's, uh, I was being lazy, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that it's going to fit where I need it to fit. It's loose enough. It's not going to hinder the movement there. And then I'll bring in a mini brad here. I think these are Recollections mini brads. Any mini brads are going to work. You can use a bigger brad. Just note that it's going to be bulkier on your card. And so I like to stick with the mini ones. And then I'm going to thread this through the front of my card here. I end up pulling this apart and putting it back a few different times because I really wasn't sure how this one was going to work. I kind of had an idea, but it didn't end up working like I had hoped it was going to work. I really wanted to kind of anchor the bottom so it was just the top of him that was moving. I'm sure there's a different interactive that would have given me that look. The swish and pop pull tab probably would have given you a similar look, I guess, maybe, if you would have had it anchored right. I don't know. Anyways, I'm speeding through this part because it didn't work as planned, and it took me quite a while to actually figure out how to get it on there and make it work how I was hoping it was going to work. So I left this in just so you can kind of see my process on it. And my patience is um, about that of a grasshopper, even when I'm sick. And so I ended up pulling it off a few different times. It didn't go as planned, and that's fine. I was hoping that I might have been able to just use the one little arm. I was afraid that it wasn't going to be stable enough, though, in the long run. Maybe once it was dry, it probably would have been okay. I also could have done clear arms like I did with my little ghosts. I chose not to do the clear ones this time just because I didn't figure you were going to see them anyway, so I wasn't too worried about it. Now you will later on, but that's a different story entirely as well. So I am going to end up re-gluing that one again because, you know, that's how I go. I've tried it. So by putting the brad on the bottom, I was hoping that I was going to get it to move like I wanted it to move. Now, that probably would have worked with maybe the waving pull tab one, like if I would have anchored him on one of the brads on the waving pull tab. But it didn't work for this one because he actually needs to be fairly free moving to make him work. And so I realized that I needed to put him on the bottom waving arm and not the top waving arm. So I end up switching these around a little bit. I had already cut my top one uh, or my bottom one off a little bit, which really didn't matter. As long as it's going to stay in that little slot, it shouldn't matter how long it is. That's why when I say you can use whichever one you don't need to have, the Dense Sweet Dense Set, they all work. You can kind of cut them down to size. And you probably wouldn't even need to use the pre-done shape. You could definitely just use a piece of paper with a hole punch on the one end or acetate. So I set that to dry and went and milked cows. And then I came back. <laughs> so, A, we get rid of that annoying sun because it's that time of year. And then I, you know, could work with an already dry mechanism and everything was glued down and worked well. So I knew that I was going to need a piece of pattern or a piece of a hill in front because I knew that he was going to move on the bottom there and I knew I was going to have to cover that up. I knew that from the get-go. I just didn't realize that he was going to move, uh, you know, the way that he ended up moving. So I do have that cut out with a stitched hillside border. I think it's the slimline one. And then I just lined it up with my die and then so it all has that matchy matchy stitched border all the way around it. So once I am happy with my placement here, and this is, you know, a me plane because I wanted to make sure that it was going to work and it worked well. So once I had this, and then I realized, oh, that little piece kind of pops out, and it kind of hides behind his hat. So, of course, 
I had to put the little scarecrow behind his hat. I was so happy. It was so cute. <laughs> uh, you know, when plants come together and unexpected plants come together, it's even better. So now it's just a matter of finishing up the rest of my scene. And so this one was definitely, I wanted the crows kind of flying away. Scarecrow doing his scarecrow type job. And so I thought all through chores on what to put for my saying on this one. Please tell me I'm not the only one that sits there and goes back and forth with sayings. Because, yeah, I was like, had so many ideas. And I know there's that new little girl scarecrow that some lucky people got. I did not do the create and crop delivered thing. And so I will wait until next August to get my girl scarecrow. But I think there's some crow sayings in that one. So I was like, I could do crow, yeah, but it's really not the one that I wanted to do. I wanted to crow away. Because <laughs> that's really what I wanted my scarecrow to do, was scare the crows away. So I thought crow away was a cute, you know, punny saying. But you could totally do crow, yeah. <sighs> like, oh, yeah. But, you know, I haven't decided on my inside sentiment on this one. It'll probably be. It depends if the recipient ends up being. So for my away here, I'm using the stamps from Happy Harvest and then just selectively inking and stamping to get the away sentiment for my crow away sentiment. So it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of lining up and it, it works. So I do have a little bit of over sandwich there. I will fix it when I'm all done here. I'm going to bring in a, I think this is the extra sentiment banner dies from Milan Font. So it's like the shorter one. I end up, you could have used the longer one too. It really didn't matter. I just needed a banner cut on the one end. And then I'm just bringing in my blending brush again with whatever's left on them. I did not re-ink them. And then I'm going to come in with a white gel pen and just kind of tap that spot that had a little bit of black ink. I also could have maybe tried the sand eraser there and tried that to clean up that extra black ink. But the white ended up working well and it kind of, it gets hidden with that blending, in ink blending, sorry. I did angle my cut on it a little bit, so this way I can add it to the W on Crow. And this will help me line up my sentiment to the bottom of my card, kind of giving it about the same, you know, amount of space on one end and the other. I do not measure. Sometimes I do. I was eyeballing it. Am I totally on, you know, probably not. That's what happened. I did add a little bit of blue ink blending onto the bottom of my letters there that you saw just to kind of make them go with the sky. I love the colors on this one. It's just so pretty. I'm a blue girl and, well, purple lately as well. So blue and purple, I love those colors together. So, And then I'm just going to add in some crows. I thought about putting a crow on top of the O, but I was afraid of it messing with my scarecrow. The other option is would have been to put it on top of the C. Now I did stamp and cut out with my brother's can and cut some more corn stalks and then the little corn cob from the harvest happy harvest stamp set as well. It actually cut them really well. I was kind of worried because you know they're not black images and sometimes it can be finicky on those things but it did fairly well new issues and then making sure that nothing is going to get in the way there I did come in with some foam tape on the back of the one corn stock there and then trying to figure out placement for the rest of my crows and deciding where I want things it took me a while to decide final layout on all of the things I really wanted the little stamp set that says ka I think it comes with I think I've seen it with the little girl scarecrow 
And so because I didn't have it, I didn't have anything in my stash that would have worked. And let's be honest, the crow does not say chirp, chirp, or peep, peep. And so I needed it to say ka. And so I did end up handwriting it on here. I practiced it 35,000 times. I hate my handwriting. <laughs> to make it work. So before I add this to the actual card base, I did remember to punch a hole in my card base using a little hand punch. And it just works, I don't know, it works well to give a little bit of extra room to get your fingers in to use that pull tab. I try to remember to do it whenever I can. So I did come in and added those with a point oh five fine liner pen. I wanted it to be super fine and super, you know, so if I didn't like it, it wasn't going to be a horrible, huge thing that I had to cover up. I know. I mean, that way. I did end up deciding I wanted another crow. I wanted a crow that went the other direction, but I don't have any other birds that are that size, I guess. And so I ended up with them all going one direction. It is what it is. So I will press that onto the top there. I did do some 3M foam adhesive behind on my panel to lift it up just a little bit more. It gives that mechanism in the back some rooming, some moving room, excuse me. And then I'm coming in with my black jelly roll pen here. The key to making this one work is make sure you get a good ink flow before you go to your actual finished product. So this way I can just kind of dot and it'll get enough of that ink out to give it that glossy eyed look. So this way all of the eyes stick out on my black crows. Now for that inside sentiment. I could do the just kidding, you're awesome because that crow away. The other one says, oh look, another glorious morning makes me sick, which is kind of on the smirky, smirky side of life. And it'll depend who this one goes to. I have options. So that is my completed card. If you made it this far, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoy snarky, kind of naughty, sane things, I did start a new YouTube channel. It is called Salty Card Creations. It is 18 plus, so you do have to be logged in to watch only because my nieces watch and I don't want them to hear me swear in, you know, video form. Anyways, if you want to check it out, if not, that's fine too. Have an amazing day. Bye.